with Tangipahoa Parish Library Baby and me, and we are in the Hammond Branch again today, and still I do not have my fun friends with me, so we're going to do all this virtually. Um, this month we are studying all about ocean animals and learning some ocean songs and reading ocean books. I hope that you guys have picked up your starfish from last week and done that at home. I've seen some of y'all's pictures on Facebook already and I love it. I miss you guys a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. So, all right, we're gonna start with our hello song and we're gonna, um, like just like always, we're gonna start with touching our nose and then we're gonna pat our head. Can you pat your head like this? Okay, and then we're, we haven't done ears for just a little bit, so we're gonna wiggle our ears. Can you grab your ears? You have one on each side and you have these little flaps down here. You can just grab them really easy and we're gonna wiggle our ears, okay? And then just like always, we're gonna finish with booping our belly. So where's your belly button, guys? You can find it in there. I'm not showing you mine, I'm not doing it. Okay, all right, so ready, here we go. Well, hello everybody, can you touch your nose? Touch your nose, touch your nose. Well, hello everybody, can you touch your nose? Touch your nose. All right, are we gonna pat our head? Where are you going? Well, hello everybody, can you pat your head? Pat your head, pat your head. Well, hello everybody, can you pat your head? Pat your head. Very good. Where's your ears? You got two. You got to put both hands up there. Get your pinchers ready like a crab. Ready? Well, hello, everybody. Can you wiggle your ears? Wiggle your ears. Wiggle your ears. Well, hello, everybody. Can you wiggle your ears? Wiggle your ears. All right, last one. Find that belly button. Well, hello, everybody. Can you boop your belly? Boop your belly boop your belly well hello everybody can you boop your belly boop your belly good job guys i'm so ready to see this live and in person aren't you are you booping your belly at home i hope you are make your grown-ups do it with you because they deserve to look silly like shell every single week that's only fair okay so today we are going to read two books um because one of them was just so fun shell needed to do it just cause. Um, but first we're gonna talk about our color. Do you remember our color from last week? Can any of you tell me what color this is? What do we think? Let's see some of the things that are this color. Kind of weird things in my picture, but what's something that's this color that maybe we're learning about? Hmm. Is the ocean this color? It's blue, right? So this is the color blue. And then our shape goes with what our story time was last week. Do we remember? It was all about a starfish. And so our shape this month is star. So let's do our sign language for those. For blue, you're gonna put your hand up like you're doing a high five, but make sure your thumb is really close and you're just gonna flip it around. And that's blue. Does anybody remember star? It's kind of a silly one because we're pointing at the stars like this. Even though we're talking about the star shape, we're pointing up. And remember last week we did our twinkle, twinkle little star song and we pointed. So we're gonna do that again this week and we're gonna work on our twinkling. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Above the world so high. This is the one I forgot. Do your diamond. Like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Okay, good job. Hopefully you did better at remembering all the things than Shell did. All right, so we are gonna start with a little felt board about fish, okay? And if we do sign language, fish is like this. It just makes your hand kind of like blue, but you turn it over to the side and you make it swim at them because fish swim, right? Okay, so this is my fancy fish tank. And on Saturday, I got my wish. I found a beautiful tank for a fish, but an empty tank, that's not much fun. So, I bought an orange fish, and that gave me one. I 
have a fish, but one won't do. So I bought a purple one. And now, how many fish do I have? Two. One, two. Okay, here we go. I have two fish swimming happily, but I bought a yellow fish. And now I have three. One, two, three. Three fish, but I want more. So I bought a red one. And now I have how many? Four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so four fish that jump and are alive. But I had to buy a pink one because that's my favorite. And now I have how many? How many do I have? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Five fish. On Saturday, I got my wish when I found a tank for all of my fish. A tank full of fish is a whole lot of fun, but I just saw my cat, meow, so I better run. I'll grab my fish tank and all my fish and we'll hide from the kitty cat. Okay, so our book today, um, our first one is The Secret Seahorse by Stella Blackstone and Claire Beaton. And what's really cool about this one is um, where most books are illustrated by drawing, um, this one they actually used fabric and they sewed all of the pictures together. So a lot like when Shell does her felt board, um, and she uses pieces of fabric to do that. And sometimes when you guys are here, you help me with it. Um, this artist actually sewed every single pick part of these pictures. So it's really neat to look at. And I liked how it looked. Um, we are reading this today with permission by Barefoot Books. And they were super nice. Shell had to email them and ask to be able to do this video. And they gave permission right, right away. So that was really sweet of them to let me share their book with you. Uh, I saw a secret seahorse deep down in the sea. Now you have to try and help me every picture. Do you see that seahorse? Do you see him hiding? He's right over here. And we see our crab. After our next story time, our craft is gonna be a crab to make it home. So you guys will get to do that. Um, I tried to swim beside him, but he was too quick for me. Can you find the seahorse in this one? Maybe under the jellyfish, you'll just see a little bit of his tail curving out. Do you see that over here on this page? All right, let's see. He swam past reefs of coral with colors flower bright. So now all these colors are very, very bright, but our seahorse is just brown in this picture. Can you see him? He's over here, he's hiding, he's just peeking out just barely. He swam past flickering fishes and then disappeared from sight. And these are our Nemo fish, our clown fish. We learned about those last week. And this is what the artist used to make a sea anemone. Remember how we learned about those that they keep the, the clown fish safe. But where is our seahorse in this picture? Do you see him? He's really camouflaged and he's hiding really well right over here. You see him? I asked the octopuses where he might have gone. Let's see, do you see him in this one? That one's hard. Just see his tail all the way over there. Shell has a video to show you next story time of an octopus crawling across the beach. It is so awesome. I'm so excited. My friend, Miss Lauren, who does story time, showed it to me. And I'm really excited to show you guys. I think you'll really think it looks neat. They shrugged and shook their legs and steadily swam on. So here, see, they just shake their legs and they swim away. But where is our seahorse? Is he hiding right with that octopus? Like peekaboo. We do peekaboo a lot of times in story time, huh? I came across a mermaid She as she combed her hair. Where's our seahorse in this one? Hmm. Oh, Shell's finger is over him. How silly is that? He's right down here. Can you see him? The mermaid is so pretty, isn't she? 
Do you see how the, um, the illustrator sewed all these little beads on to make her tail? That's beautiful. Uh-oh, what's in this picture? Is that a shark? I found an ancient shipwreck, but I couldn't see him there. Where did our seahorse go? I hope he didn't get eaten by a shark. No, he's hiding over here in the boat. You see him? At last, I found a secret cave. It looked so dark and dim. I stayed outside and shivered. I didn't dare go in. So we have a turtle and some big fish. And these are sea urchins. They kind of feel look pointy. But where, oh, where did our seahorse go? Shell has to look this time. He's not hiding under her finger. I wonder if he went in the cave. Let's turn the page and we'll find out. Then in the cave, I saw a glint. And guess who greeted me? Who do you, what do you think? Do you see the bubbles? The sparkly, sparkly bubbles? Oh my goodness, look who he found. Not just one seahorse, not one secret seahorse, but a whole seahorse family was hiding in that little cave. That's not a scary place to be. They're all there, that's their house. Just like if I was to come to your house, if it was a dark and stormy night, it might seem scary. But once you go in, it's your friendly family, right? And they were all excited to make a friend. Okay, so this week you are going to be, or not this week, next week, Shell is gonna do a video where you get to make your own seahorse um, and you get to make it whatever color you want. And so in our book, our seahorse was brown and that's, you know, it's good because he was hiding and that made him harder to find. But I wanted you to know that seahorse look very different, a lot like when we did our starfish and we have a lot of different um, ways that starfish look. Our seahorse also do, like look at this one, is so purple and bright with some white on him and even a little bit of like a light pink. That's kind of cool looking, right? And then this one looks like a dragon, but this is a seahorse. It looks completely different. So if your seahorse looks nothing like mine, that's okay, because look at this one. Isn't he crazy looking? And then look at this one that is bright red and white. And he's a little short. He's kind of a short chubby seahorse, but he hides really well in his coral, doesn't he? So that makes it easier for him to hide and stay safe. And then this one's kind of an, a, like an orangey coral pink and white. And doesn't he look so bright? Can you see, his, look at his little eye and his long, long nose. He has like a Pinocchio nose, huh? And his tail curls this way and that. That's how they kind of move through the water is they wave their tail. But look at this little guy that's blue and green. His tail's all curled up. So whatever you imagine your seahorse to look like, it's gonna be amazing, okay? And look at this, this one has red and green and yellow, and this is all one seahorse, just as he kind of was moving through the water. The um, photographer took a lot of different pictures to share with us. So when you make your seahorse next week, don't you even worry about what color papers you have or how it turns out or what it looks like because that's your seahorse and it can look whatever you want it to look like because all these guys look their own way, right? Okay, so our next book is about sharks. And um, I really love the sign language for this because it's just like when I was growing up, you, when you wanted to do a shark and you were in the water, you would put it on top of your head and you would say, dun, 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 dun. And that's how you would try and scare your friends when you went swimming. But that's actually the sign language for it. You just put your fin up on top of your head and that's a shark. So that is really fun for me that I grew up without even knowing it, scaring all my friends in the pool with my shark. Okay, so this is a fun book because watch, his mouth opens and it's called Shark Bite. It is illustrated by um, Beatrice Costamanga, Costamanga, and we're reading it with permission of Little Bee Books. And again, Shell emailed them and they were super sweet and emailed right back and said, absolutely use our book. So I'm very thankful for that. Mark the shark was very sad. He didn't have any other friends because the fish were scared of his sharp, scary teeth. Chomp, chomp. 
One day, a brave crab pinched Mark's tail and Mark opened his huge mouth and said, ouch. Mark was mad. I am gonna bite all of you guys. So all the other creatures were very scared. Come out, come out wherever you are, yelled Mark. If you won't be my friends, then you'll be my dinner. He's got sharp, scary teeth, huh? Just then, a friendly octopus reached out to Mark with her tentacles. She wanted to calm him down, but what do you think happened? If an octopus came up with all of her tentacles and touched your side, what would happen? It would tickle, right? So she ended up tickling him. Mark could not stop giggling. Please, please stop. <laughs> I love how the shark's teeth open and close so much. And then you get to see a peek of the next page. The other fish heard Mark laughing. What's going on, they wondered. They came out of their hiding places and saw that Mark wasn't so scary at all. And now Mark the shark has many friends. Isn't that super cute? And you can ch um, check these out in the library. They're available for you. Shell is gonna check them back in. So I wanted to tell you, we also have some really fun books about sharks. These are not really the ones that you would look at um, for your age always because you guys are a little bit little, but this one um, I really, really liked because it does tell you about sharks and other sea creatures. But in addition to the crafts that you're doing with Shell, there are some other craft ideas. And this one is um, DK Sharks and Other Sea Creatures, and it is available at the library to check out as well. Super fun. Okay, so we talked about shark is our sign language, but I wanted to show you some really cool things. Um, did, do you know that, have you seen Finding Nemo? I hope you have. Um, these are the three sharks in Finding Nemo, and this is Chum, and this is Bruce, and this is Anchor. And Chum is a Mako shark. Now, a Mako shark is the fastest shark out there, okay? This is what they look like in real life. So they did a pretty good job, right, in drawing a Mako shark. See his big round eye and he's got a very, very pointy nose. Um, but the cool thing about a Mako shark is they can jump out of the water really high. They can jump up to 30 feet into the air. Can you imagine? They could catch a bird as it's flying by and eat it for dinner. That would scare me so much, I can't even tell you. Um, anchor is what's known as a hammerhead shark. Now, a hammerhead shark gets its name because look at his silly head. Okay, now you can see Anchor's silly head and you almost think, how in the world could there ever be an animal that looks like that? But look, they did a pretty good job. Can you see his silly head? It's kind of shaped like a hammer, right? Well, hammerhead shark uses his head. He pushes it down if he's, because he eats stingrays for dinner. So he uses it to hold the stingray down on the floor of the ocean so that he can catch it. So it's kind of like, he uses it like a hand. Okay, and look at this one. This shows you how big a hammerhead shark is next to a person. This crazy person is feeding a hammerhead shark. Like if you go to the petting zoo, you would maybe feed the sheep or the goats. This guy is totally crazy and he is feeding a shark. And look at those teeth. That shell will never, ever, ever do that. She will never feed the hammerhead shark. Um, and then Bruce, our last one, is a great white shark. And he is really very, very, very big. He likes to eat fish and stingrays, but he also eats sea lions and seals. Um, Something interesting about the great white shark, they are good at jumping, but not quite as good as the mako shark. They can only come up about this much because they're the chubby shark. I mean, he really is. He likes to eat cookies like Shell does, okay? He can't be skinny and fast like the mako shark. Um, he's a bigger guy, so he can only jump out of the water a little bit. When you guys come back live and in person, Shell will show you how high she can jump, not this high, okay? I, I would not get out of the water either, but, a really cool thing about the great white sharks, can you see their sharp teeth? They have over 3, 
thousand teeth. You have like 40. Okay, so that means they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more teeth than you. Can you imagine trying to brush 3,000 teeth in the morning? We talked about what it would be like to put our coat on if we had 40 arms like the starfish, but this guy has 3,000 teeth. That's crazy, right? Um, Miss Haley, can you hand me my box that's right over there? I have a helper helping me video today. Our last shark is the largest shark and it is called a whale shark. And thank you so much. Um, and it is actually not in Finding Nemo, but it was in Finding Dory. So if you saw that one, Destiny is a whale shark and she's really big. This is what a whale shark looks like next to a person. So really, really big. We remember how big the, um, the hammerhead shark was next to the person, that crazy guy who was feeding him. But look how big the whale shark is compared to a person, okay? And look, look how good they did drawing the whale shark in Finding Dory. Isn't that such a silly kind of smiley mouth? That's great, right? And see, they're speckly kind of like, um, like a leopard or a cheetah. They have dots on them. Now, if you're looking at sharks, this is how big a whale shark is. This one right here would be Bruce, the great white shark. So it's a lot bigger. The, the whale shark is lots and lots bigger. And all the way down here, this little tiny one, this one is the Mako shark. So that's anchor. So you can see that this is why he might be really, really fast. He's skinny and fast and jumps so high. And then here is our great white that's kind of like shell, eats some cookies and can't get all the way out of the water. And then we have our giant whale shark. He's not even trying. He's, not, he's just gonna stay down in the deep, deep water because he's so big. But um, they are not nearly as aggressive um, or have as many teeth as our great white shark. So that's our fun science for today. And um, the other thing Shell has that she wanted to show you is I have a starfish. Now this is dried out. This is not what they look like when they're alive but this will just let you see the bumpies on them. And that's why we used our bubble wrap, right? To kind of get the idea of those bumpies. And then underneath is where all those little fingers are that we talked about help them crawl. And in the middle right there, that's where the starfish's mouth will be. And if you guys come in, Shell will have these with a handy dandy magnifying glass so that you can look at the different parts of the starfish for yourself, okay? So if you come in, um, mom needs to use the computer or when we get back to normal, you ask me, Shell will have this on her desk and I'll bring it out and show it to you because it's really pretty neat. And then the other thing I have is this is how big some of the shark's teeth are in a great white. So can you imagine if this was in your mouth and you had to brush 3,000 of them every morning and every night? Would you wanna floss this thing? I don't think so. My it, shell has a very large mouth and still it's very big. So that's fun. All right, so we're going to do our turtle song and say goodbye, cause it's time, All right? Can you get your turtle ready? Put your thumb out, catch your shell. And when he drinks water, we make a W, touch our chin, okay? My mommy had a turtle, she named him Tiny Tim. She put him in the bathtub to see if he could swim. He drank up all the water. He ate up all the soap. And now he's home, sick in bed with a bubble in his throat. Bubble, 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 bubble. Thanks so much, guys. I miss you. I love you. I'll see you soon. Come back next week.